Tonight was all about showing the potential of AI and artists to come together and create innovation and ideally inspire a whole generation of people to take AI and do whatever they want with it. I think technology is actually neutral. It's all about how we choose to use it. And that's why at the AI for Good Summit, I find it quite fascinating that there's all these use cases being kind of put forward that might make people think differently about technology. My name is LJ Rich. Everything I am going to do is live. Nothing has been pre-recorded. OK, OK. Something strange just happened. I didn't tell you anything. You all knew what to do. How did you know to do that? Now you've got the idea, let me try another song. OK, so something, something's going on. There are some rules. We use these rules to create moods like magic and mystery. We use those rules to create strength and certainty. Or just something to keep us calm while we're on hold. These are our unwritten rules how we respond to music, how our body moves, how our thinking changes. These are rules that we know so well, and yet they are really hard to teach a machine. How do we teach a machine musicality? So in my day job, I'm a TV presenter, I'm an inventor, I present on the BBC talking about music and technology trends. I'm also a composer and a sound designer. Um, I build musical installations that make people feel good. These are paper mandalas. By touching this, that lady is triggering sounds from NASA's uh, Discovery Space Mission. And on the, on the left here, those are people touching flowers and triggering tropical forest sounds. And just there is the Science Museum, who hosted an idea I had about creating dance music based on how much people were moving. We picked up sensor data from their mobile phones, and my plan was to derive the wiggle index and therefore get the ultimate dance anthem out of data. I make devices that make people experience music differently. Some of my inventions have been, um, well, in the national press. I've lectured at Harvard. DJed in Tokyo, and now I'm leading a project with NASA on creative approaches to data sonification. So just a few years ago, I found out that my brain is wired differently to others. It's a neurological condition called synesthesia. My senses are completely mixed together. <laughs> when I first tell people about this, many think it sounds a bit crazy. Uh, some find it funny, but most are quite fascinated and would like to know more about it. Around 3 to 4% of the population have this. You might. You might see colors and numbers together, or letters, or days of the week. My version is particularly strong. For me, these sentences make complete sense. David Bowie, at Life on Mars. That's like a beautiful dark blue color with purple. Um, ABBA. That's actually, pleasingly, the same color as the Swedish flag, blue and yellow. Um, sushi is this kind of beautifully clear acoustic D and A. It's that perfect fifths. And coffee, oh, beautiful coffee is like a... Beautiful coffee is actually like Gershwin.
That's why I don't drink bad coffee. Making unexpected connections is pretty much how everyone generates new ideas, going from one modality to another. And it's a practice easily seen in consumer electronics. Before the World Wide Web, the smart revolution, and the Internet of Things, phones did not come with cameras. Wow. <laughs> Um, speakers didn't come with built-in AI assistants. Central heating didn't come with internet connecti connectivity. But remixing technology is now commonplace. So it makes perfect sense to me that AI will change music just as it will every other aspect of our lives. So going back to teaching a machine musicality, first we need to think about what's useful to know about how music is built. Music is a repetitive phenomenon. It's made up of a set of repeatable notes. Everything is made up of the, sm of the same small bass elements. Now, Western music has one set of notes. Uh, other styles have different intervals. But in general, all music is considered repeatable sounds. And notes are combined in different ways. They're used to create different feelings. Perhaps we can get music and machines to understand each other if we extract its essence, its DNA. A, music, a machine could recombine it, work out how to compose music to make us feel specific things. Maybe machine learning could create the tune that gives us that hairs on the back of our neck feeling. Well, we're halfway there. <laughs> well, living on a prayer. No, I can't do that, honestly. OK, so with a bit of server space, you can train an AI to create music based on your favorite band or artist, which is exactly what some people have done. Uh, would you like to hear some music generated by machines? Yes, awesome. OK, here is uh, Bach. is by David Cope. He's a composer. Bach wrote over 1,100 organ works, and he decided to just throw this all into the computer quite a while ago, actually. And when it first started throwing music out, it was boring. He had to add a random element so that the machine would break the rules, just like Bach did. It's pretty good. What about this? This is the Beatles. The Beatles, I should say. This is by Flow Machines. They got a band to play the song that was composed by an AI. This song is called Daddy's Car. The lyrics were generated by machines. The idea was generated, but it was played by humans. So it does sound more human. Okay, what about black metal? Ready? is at CJ Carr's project, and he has a 24-hour black metal AI streaming channel on YouTube. It's gone viral. It's generated completely by an AI using a recurrent neural network. That's enough of that. OK. So we discovered that there are issues with AI musicians. I know this because I was jamming with an AI in Croatia as part of a consortium of music technologists. There's a sentence you don't see, you don't say every day. And the AI machine is terrible at listening, and yet attempting to play along with it was quite inspiring. You have a conversation with another person. You find places to connect with them. You learn their character, how fast they talk, their tone, their genes. And it's the same when you play music with another person. But in this case, I was learning the personality of a machine. And machines don't understand when to break the rules. They don't understand social cues when you empty a band. There are lots of these unwritten rules that we follow together. And the AI can do low-level work. What is the next note after the previous note? But it struggles with high-level concepts. Right now, we can't make AIs that cross genres, a bit like playing an easy-listening version of a rock classic. 
like Iron Maiden singing Two Minutes to Midnight in the style of Mozart opera. It's, company, it's currently something that no machine can do very convincingly, but luckily my synesthesia allows me to do this, and I'm now at your service. So if you would like to have a go, please can you call out some artists? What was that? Motley Crue, Motley Crue. okay, some more? Prince, Daft Punk, okay. And then can I have some genres, please? Pulp blues, reggae, okay. So, <laughs> so we've got Daft Punk and reggae I picked out. Okay, so what I do is I, I kind of take the elements of these things and I mix them together. Um, so reggae is interesting because it has the accent on the second and fourth beat of the bar. Okay, and then you've got like a daft punk song which has a really driving beat. Okay, so how do you mix those together? You do this. So that's, that's the idea. Normally, I would do one or two more because you're such a fabulous audience, but I'm aware our time together is coming to an end. So maybe I'll do this later uh, if, if there is a piano somewhere. So let me leave you with a few thoughts about why I think music and technology could give us all clues on what the future holds. Voice is music, emotion and tonality. Emotion recognition could be a very interesting and powerful development if your bank, for example, detects stress in your voice, it could know how much you really need to borrow that money and then adjust the interest rates accordingly. <laughs> and mechanical devices, they make music. The sounds of an engine could be analyzed, and this could allow a system to work out the likely point of failure way before we hear that big bang. There'll be micro sounds that you could learn to pick up. I believe all of us have the potential to think like someone with synesthesia, in the same way you feel when something is right. Inspiration is everywhere, but it's how we channel, it's how we channel it that makes a difference. Those unexpected connections could be the key to you solving your specific problem creatively and elegantly. And I believe every one of you can access this more easily than you think. Inspiration is ours right now. It doesn't have to be elusive. It could be as simple as brushing your teeth with the other hand or ordering something different. So please, start making your own unexpected connections. And I hope that you have a truly inspirational evening and beyond. Thank you very much.